on for a few moments, please. The, the pictures are perfect, but that music is so misleading. The sun is hot and high, but this isn't the tropics. The sea is clear and calm, but it's not the Caribbean. These are England's treasure islands, the Scillies, 30 miles from the coast of Cornwall. So can we start again, please? That's better. Well, a bit. Going to these islands takes you through a time warp to a world where holidays are the way they used to be. A seaside world of any more for the Skylark, of stop me and buy one. The seaside world before they invented racy hats saying kiss me quick or t-shirts with slogans on. People take holidays here year after year. When they saw us and our camera, they said, you're not going to spoil it, are you? <laughs> no need to worry. The sillies are unspoilable. This is one reason why they're not all that easy to get to. The helicopter takes 20 minutes from Penzance, but Penzance is a long way from where most people live, and a return ticket's 66 pounds from April. There's talk of putting in a proper runway, but until then, a 16-passenger twin otter is the biggest the airport can take. The ferry takes two and a half hours from Penzance, costs £42 return, and rarely sails on Sundays. As a first-time visitor to the Scillies, I had no idea how many islands there are in the chain. Near enough 200 if you include every rock that's big enough to carry a name. But there are only five inhabited islands. There's St Agnes, which is just over there. There's St Mary's, the island we're on. And behind me, there's Briar and Tresco and St Martin's. Now, as you can see, they're all clustered conveniently close and they're served by a network of ferries. Now, those small boats will play a very big part in your holiday here because you use them not only as ferries, but also on sightseeing trips. Every morning, the pleasure fleet scatters from St Mary's Quay. It's good to know that once on board, you're in the hands of experts. My house found the only surefire way of turning shack from the corner is to catch the tail feathers. Well, I never knew that. You spot terns, razorbills, cormorants, guillemots and puffins. Don't forget to bring binoculars, though they're not always needed. When the tide's high, of course, we're up almost level with them. We can get in touch with rock and they still stay there like that. Very friendly little bird. Passing the western rocks, we disturb more local inhabitants, but they're an interlude on our way to somewhere special. There she is, the tallest lighthouse in the world. The Bishop Bishop's Rock Lighthouse, lighthouse the tallest in the top. world, soaring the 160 feet lighthouse. above the surging Atlantic. Just think, the next lighthouse to the west is New York's Ambrose Light. On the way back, the boat takes us to the island of St. Agnes, next door to St. Mary's. This is an ideal lunch stop. For most, a pint and a pasty in the pub just 100 yards or so from the jetty. You can spend a couple of leisurely hours here and take another boat back. The same £3.50 excursion ticket covers you for that. On St. Agnes is one of England's oldest lighthouses. They used to burn coal in this tower, which dates from 1680. It isn't used now, but Trinity House keeps it whitewashed for old time's sake. The Longstone Heritage Centre on St Mary's. You won't be long around these islands before talk turns to shipwrecks and treasure. There are hundreds of known wrecks, including the most famous, the Association, the flagship of a fleet that went down in 1707 when more than 1,400 lives were lost. Treasure galleons, stately merchant ships of the East India Company, coasters and cargo boats, all have come to grief around these islands. On Tresco is a collection of salvaged figureheads, ghosts made of timber raised from the graveyard sea. Nobody really knows how many broken ships, how many coral bones rest around the cities. On a practical note, let me tell you about accommodation. St Mary's is where you find most of it. You can stay in somewhere as old as the Star Castle, built in 1593. Between March and October, it's 259 to 294 pounds for a week on half board terms. Down in town, the Atlantic charges from 270 to 305 pounds for a similar week. There are guest houses too numerous to mention, and at Holy Vale, a flower farm in the middle of the island, we found good examples of self-catering accommodation. 
converted granite barns. They cost between 95 and 210 pounds for a week. Over on the island of St. Martin's is a brand new hotel. Much more than a new hotel, in fact, but it represents a giant leap forward for all the islands. The St. Martin's Hotel brings to the Scillies an extremely high standard of accommodation and service, but in order to succeed, it must remain open and busy all year round. A week here on half-board terms will cost from 308 to 567 pounds between now and the end of the year. The tiny island of St. Martin's, hello, has about 85 inhabitants. They live in Lower Town, Middle Town and Higher Town. And this is the mile-long main road that links them all together. This whole island is an area of outstanding natural beauty and one that doesn't take easily to innovation and intrusion. You can well understand how the new hotel was opposed by some. But it's there now and working hard to succeed. The day we visited St. Martin's, the crew of the island's gig, Dolphin, were putting in some last-minute practice for a race that was to be held that evening. There's tremendous rivalry between the islands when it comes to gig racing, and a lot more besides. Gigs have always been part of island life and legend. 28 to 30 feet long, with a 5-foot beam and drawing less than 2 feet, they were mainly used to get local pilots onto passing ships and for salvage work. They have six oars and were banned from having more because, in smuggling days, the excise cutters couldn't catch them. On this occasion, Dolphin and the others couldn't catch Nornor, the gig from St. Mary's, but they were sporting losers. On Tresco were the famous Abbey Gardens, 12 acres of exotic plants, semi-tropical thanks to the Gulf Stream. Here you'll find a purple plant called Echium siloniensis, a hollyhock on steroids. You can stay on Tresco in hotels and self-catering cottages, but accommodation's limited. That's another reason the Sillies can't be spoiled. All the accommodation on all the islands adds up to only 2,000 beds. I said there were an awful lot of islands down here, didn't I? Which means, of course, that if you want to get right away from it all, you can find an island of your very own, just like this one. How's that for an impersonation of the Little Mermaid? As John said, it is quite difficult to get there. We flew with Bryman Airways, who operate regular flights between April and October. Return fares from Gatwick range from 169 to 220 pounds, and from Plymouth, 83 pounds to 106 pounds, depending when you travel.